Hi everyone, I'm Finola Howard from How Great Marketing Works and I have another wonderful expert for our expert panel for you today. And Philippa Jane, who I'm introducing you to, is someone who is really interesting because all you have to do is look at her background. She has a background in uh, artificial intelligence. She's a lawyer. She has worked in the family business in South Africa. She moved to Ireland. She is the champion of all things, data privacy, GDPR, all of this compliance work, copyright, intellectual law, all of this stuff. And I am delighted to introduce you to her today. And she will be an important person for you to speak to when you want to look at all things compliance, GDPR, all of that stuff that freaks so many entrepreneurs out. And what I love about Philippa Jane is that she breaks it down, but more so she thinks, and I agree with her, that GDPR is good for your marketing. And yeah. I love that. And we agree on that part. So let me hand you over and say, hello, how are you today? I'm very well, thank you. And thank you for having me. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Fantastic. So I let you do a little intro about your background so people can get to know you. Okay. Um, I kind of fell into my business in Ireland and I'm very happy that I did. I was going to specialize further, but I really am wonderfully happy in the space of doing data protection and privacy um, changes, positive changes for SMEs and smaller businesses, family run businesses, one one women businesses, online businesses, um, you know, startups, that, that space really, really excites me because I find working with people one on one, people become very excited about changes um, and they really understand it and they start to live it. Um, it's far more satisfying working in that, that space than with um, larger corporations uh, that's satisfying as well in its own way. But we see change happening quickly in the SME, SME space um, where it really matters, I do believe, especially in Ireland where most businesses are SMEs, you know? Yeah. And well, actually internationally, I suppose most businesses are SMEs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but I, what I like about this is you have this really positive approach to, you know, a word that is privacy, data protection, yeah. compliance that freaks so many people out. And I love this, spin that you have of making it an opportunity absolutely Finola it is an opportunity um, we find businesses that have been going for a long time completely refreshed by the time they've gone through the exercise of, of cleaning up their house basically yeah. you know cleaning up their data putting things in the right place I think I've said it to you before I'll say it again businesses have lost the the job of the office filing manager or, you know, the sort of, not even the PA, the, really the office manager, you know, the person who ordered the stationery, who kept mm. the files going, who opened the letters, who made sure your diary was in order. You know, we really need to to be mindful of that and to have that come back that we've, um, we've all started hoarding. And I mean, you just have to look at your personal picture collection on your phone to know that you're a hoarder, you know. Um, so I fully, I fully, fully support the positive side of things, lean and green and you get going, you know, you don't have that fear in your mind of where is everything, what are we going to do if there's a data breach, you, you can answer questions straight away, you, ha you have nothing to hide really by the time why you've do you, why do done you your think, exercise. Why do you think it's an opportunity? Why do you think compliance, data protection, data privacy is an opportunity? People would have said uh, two years ago as a marketing spin, it's a differentiator and it shouldn't be a differentiator. Should, everybody should be doing it, you know, to say that you're, you're uh, complying with the law as a differentiator is, is a bit um, wrong in my opinion, you know. Um, it's an opportunity because it primarily gives people peace of mind, you know. Um, they, they are absolutely aware of where they are in the marketing sense. If you came to me and said, I have a list of, I, I mean, I don't even know what a good average size list is. That's how fantastic I am at marketing. But say, <laughs> I've got a list of 100,000 people. I'd laugh at you and say, well, how many sales do you make in a month out of that list? You know, yeah. like, let's, let's have a real conversation about it. 50,000 is nothing if nobody's actually engaging and buying from you. So let's look at your list. Where do these people come from? How often do they open things? Yeah, I know we're analyzing traffic now and looking at that. But in reality, 
those types of numbers put you into um, a bad place. It's a false sense of security. You know, you've hoarded this data, you've hoarded all of these contacts, potential leads, you know, are they actually real leads? So by the time you've culled it in a sensible way and you've analyzed, you've, you've um, marked your source of where your data comes from, you can actually get the, the really, the real and sometimes very harsh picture of where you are in your business and you know what? A reality check is always a good thing, as painful as it might be at the time, because you look at that and you go, okay, I've got 10. I've actually got 10 real leads on this list of 50,000. And now I'm going to start working on proper, decent leads that are that going time, to get me to, to a sale. Like, that's really interesting, you know, uh, because isn't it better for you to have those 10 really good leads Absolutely. that actually like Absolutely. you, are interested yeah. in you? than the 50,000 who have no idea who you are. Exactly. It's, I always find it's interesting when we speak to each other because it's it's about this mutual respect. You're respecting yeah. your own business by Absolutely. understanding your data, your list yeah. of your true list, but you're also respecting your customer and people Absolutely. where they are in this cycle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I think our messages, I mean, I really have internalized your message in my business. And I say that quite openly, you know, where you look at where people are on their journey, you mm. know, some might just be slightly interested. So you feed them your blog post, you give them that, that valuable information for free, because you know what, if you don't, they're not going to buy from you anyway. Mm. So you might as well give them something. They'll come back for more. They'll engage. They'll start listening to your videos. They'll start engaging on your webinars. They'll actually ask you a question. They'll pick up the telephone. People pick up the telephone and they talk, you know, and then you might say, okay, I'll come by. I'm, I'm passing your office. I'll, I'll give you half an hour of my time. Let's meet for a coffee. And they okay, become your most you valuable now. customers. Yeah. I'm going to stop you because that's powerful. Yeah. That we can now, and I love this about you, Phyllis, but this yeah. is why you're on the panel. <laughs> that we can reframe this whole idea of data yeah. as being a way of understanding where our customers and potential customers are on their journey with us. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's so powerful, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. There's, that is the opportunity. That is insight. You know, it's yeah. not just going to analytics. It's also, you know, it's real insight of yeah. how they behave with you. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. love it. I just love yeah. that. So, and I know you're inundated because you have this great, unique perspective from this. Um, yeah. What, let me then ask you, because I think you're going to blow some people's minds for being a lawyer and a artificial intelligence scientist, <laughs> data scientist, all of these things, but it has this wonderful perspective of turning the law, turning data into something that has much more meaning and power yes. for any business and so my question because I, I just think even talking to you is good because it changes mindset but yeah. when would be a good time for someone um, on the program to speak to you to have a session with you if we're talking about businesses expanding a little and gaining a few employees, you know, in that sense, that's a good time because then we talk about employees data and the policies and procedures that should be in place in that regard, because that is quite a serious thing. You know, we need to respect our employees privacy um, hugely. Um, but I would imagine that we're talking sort of business growth and marketing. If you're going to start researching and list building, that's an excellent time to talk to me because, because, it is entirely possible to cold call on email, you know, in line with the law. And I'm not going to say any more than that because it might get me into trouble where people say, Philippa says you can do that. <laughs> you know, you, you really need to come and have a chat because I have worked with more than enough startups in the last two years now in Ireland specifically um, and people expanding into the States. Canada has very, very strict anti-spam laws, but we will build a strategy together that will get you into a fantastic list building space that's entirely compliant with GDPR. Yeah, that's so tangible. That's great. Yeah. And again, I really like your reframing. I have to reiterate yeah. this, that it's not, you don't come to the likes of Philippa because you have to. You come yeah. to the likes of Philippa to maximize your opportunity for Exactly. Growth. Yeah, thank you, Fanola. Exactly, that's it. You say it so beautifully. Yeah, really love it. Okay, so... That great. Okay. So, yeah. and I also know I do have to say this about Philippa has 
uh, is inundated, I have to stress. So we are very lucky to have her on this panel. But I also want to share with you that she was aware of the need of this. And as a result, she has launched a new um, piece of software called Serity to help people. Um, and even it's worth having a conversation with. Tell us about Serity, because I think this is groundbreaking. I love this. Yeah. Yeah, we're very excited about the app. Thanks, Finola, for, for bringing it up. It's um, what, we, what we found was we couldn't get around to doing the initial benchmarking and auditing of businesses. There, there were just too many requests where we needed to plug into the more specialized space. So what we did is we turned the function of the GDPR auditor, you know, the person going around with a sort of clipboard and checklist into an app where you can do that yourself. So it only works if you're entirely honest, but nobody's going to know what your answers are anyway. So it's for you to log in and to start doing your check. Um, it is a very, very comprehensive in-depth audit and it covers every single aspect of data protection, privacy compliance. Um, so you have to set aside real time to do it, but you will get a very comprehensive report that gives you amazing um, fixes. So pointers in the right direction. They're not prescriptive. They're designed to uh, mold to your business and your size of business, your type of business. And then you can go back and re-answer questions. So it's, it's kind of gamified that you always want to get a better score. You'll understand exactly where you're at with your compliance and you'll, you'll appreciate the risks that you have in your business. You can accept those risks and you can build the plan. Um, honestly, it takes a good, I, I would say in smaller size businesses, two to three years to achieve compliance. So best to start planning for it now. Good to know that. Yeah. Can, I, can I just say one thing, Fanola, that people might be very interested in is that the national cyber um, uh, plan has come out for Ireland. And part of it is a leaning towards what has already happened in the UK, where if you're going to be tendering or involved in any business with a government or related department, that you have to show your compliance with in the UK cyber essentials. You've done your cyber essentials compliance and Ireland is developing something very similar to cyber essentials. Um, if I'm reading the news on the ground correctly. So quite soon in the next couple of years, we're probably going to be landed with a situation where we're going to have to show our data protection, privacy, cyber compliance before we hand our tenders in. Excellent insight. Thank you for that. Yeah. But I, I also presume that's going to be Europe wide. I beg your pardon, sorry. I would presume that it will go that direction throughout Europe. And the oh, rest absolutely. Of the world. Absolutely. The States as well. I mean, it's like wildfire now. So basically, nobody's going to be prepared to do business with you unless you can give them a measure of security. So the Serity support, the Serity report is designed that you can print that out. There's three um, separate versions of it. There's one for your customer facing supply chain version. You can print that out and show people where you're at with your compliance. Fantastic, that's yeah. great. I urge you to have a look at that and I urge you to use one of your sessions with Philippa when you're list building. Yeah. So, yeah, fabulous. Okay, looking so forward on, to it. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm so excited. Every time I talk to you, I'm excited. So anyway, <laughs> um, my last question for you, Philippa, is what are the three tips you'd give to entrepreneurs? And I love your perspective because you've had, you've worked in the family business in South Africa. You've set up a business here in Ireland. You are looking at trading internationally now. So yeah. like, great, you must have great insights for us. I'll recycle your best tip to me, Finola. Stick to the plan, there is time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Stick to the plan. There is time. That's the first tip. The second tip is just just keep walking. Honestly, just keep walking. It's not easy for anybody. So you'll have the good days. You'll have the bad days. And the third one is surround yourself with a group of really good people for support. Really yeah. like that's that's the best for me. I dip in and out of our support group, you know, um, but there are times where that has been an absolute lifeline. Yeah, I have to share with you that Philip is actually a member of the Get Strategic, Get Results group as well as being yeah. an expert on our panel she just shone so brightly we had to have her <laughs> so and I let's just recap because before we came on camera um, she mentioned that stick to the plan T share with us again why you think that you what she mentioned to me when we before we started recording was she looks at that sentence every single day oh, and yeah. I, I also will have to uh, share that I do the same because it keeps me focused but I'd yeah. like to hear Philippa's perspective yeah I think as entrepreneurs we find we find ourselves getting stuck in very unhealthy cycles 
where we we actually don't realize we've built a habit out of it. Mm -hmm. So we start doing something and it doesn't achieve the results we thought it would achieve. So we give up and start again and we repeat the cycles over and over and over again instead of having a strategic plan for our business mm -hmm. and treating it like a um, you know, a separate entity to ourselves mm. um, and minding it and setting goals and nurturing it and feeding it and actually sticking to that plan. So, you know, you break it down so wonderfully in, in your material and courses there that, you know, you have the big picture, you break it down into your quarterly goals and then go to monthly, weekly, daily goals to achieve. Um, it's, it's really essential to do that. And sticking to the plan is not, it's not something natural because I'm, um, I in in my life and in my business I deal with a lot of let's say firefighting so mm -hmm. I can pivot in an instant and do something different so I have to fight my urge to do that in the business constantly and actually stick to the plan to achieve the results that I need to achieve and this last year has been incredible with the changes that I've seen by just simply sticking to the plan yeah and I think you it's wonderful to to see where you are now because because of your habits and how you focus on things because she has philip has had exponential growth over the last two years like it's amazing and i think that not only should you speak to philip about uh gdpr and compliance you can also speak to her about the entrepreneurial journey and what works and what doesn't because it's always really good and i really believe in uh accessible mentors people that are you know ahead of you but that you can get you can aspire to and see and move not not all we always want to see the people who are like the steve jobs or like the people that wearing my t-shirt today i am more. like steve jobs oh <laughs> i love it fantastic fantastic so yeah great so your three tips again so it's stick to the plan Surround yourself by really good people. And the second one that you said? can't remember now. You're going to have to rewind, Fanola. It was just like <laughs> wisdom off the top of my head. Hey, they were good. They were good. And absolutely, thank you so much for being with us here today, Philippa Jane. And my pleasure. check her out and talk, yeah. think differently about your compliance. Yeah. Think, it, uh, think of it. And here's your number. We'll replace this number two. Yeah. We'll think of it as an opportunity. Yes. And yeah. How you can convert your list building yeah. into something that's compliant and exciting and will actually grow your business absolutely properly like properly yeah yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. thank you so much for your time my today. pleasure thank you for having me yeah we're delighted we're delighted you're unstoppable you're unstoppable